we learned about the squares theorem. If you have a complicated function like g of x, and that function is bounded between two known functions, if the limit of those two known functions are equal to L, then you can conclude that the limit of that complicated function is also equal to L around the given value A. Again, you need to find two known functions, parent functions, hopefully, so you can squeeze this complicated function in between. For example, suppose I ask you to find the limit of x squared cosine of 1 over x as x approaches 0. You can squeeze cosine function in between two constant functions. y equals to b is a constant of a function. Remember that if you have a linear function and the slope is equal to zero, then y becomes b, which is a flat function. Just a flat line. Let's take a look at this once together and see how we can squeeze this function between these two given values. This is cosine of 1 over x, complicated function. What is the behavior around the origin? Graph y equals to 1, two nice constant functions that you need to always remember. This function, cosine of 1 over x, is bounded between these two flat lines which are y equals to 1 and y equals to negative 1. Perfect. Now what are we going to do? We're going to multiply everything by x squared. Do a little bit of algebra. Multiply the inequality by x squared. What happens? You have negative 1 times x squared less than equals to x squared times cosine of 1 over x less than or equals to 1 times x squared. So basically, you are finding these two functions. These are the basic properties of sine and cosine that we know. So now you have negative x squared less than or equals to x squared cosine of 1 over x less than or equals to x squared. We found our f, we have our g, and this is our h. Now take the limit. Limit of negative x squared as x approaches to 0 is 0, which is equal to limit of x squared as x approaches to 0. So the upper bound and the lower bound, they both have the same limit at 0. The conclusion is applying squeeze theorem. The limit of g of x, which in this case is x squared, cosine of 1 over x as x approaches to 0, is also 0. Can take a look at this more and hopefully see this visually. So here I have x squared multiplied by cosine of 1 over x, and the upper bound was x squared itself, quadratic function, and the lower bound is negative x squared, another quadratic function. So basically around 0, this complicated function, which is x squared cosine of 1 over x, is bounded by these two quadratic functions. And as you can see, the limit must be zero.